Single moms put water in their kids' mouth because food prices are up 11% year over year. Here in Canada, where we have the fourth most farmland per capita of any nation on earth, people can't afford to gas their vehicles. And we now have more serious problems than that. 1.5 million people ate at a food bank in one month last year here in Canada. One food bank CEO even reported that she's getting people coming in asking for help with medical assistance in dying. Not because they're sick, but because they're too poor to live a happy life. When you have a prime minister who knows nothing about governance, has no scruples whatsoever, and has a particularly annoying fixation on mundane issues while completely ignoring real issues, this is almost exactly how bad you expect things to be. But Trudeau's Canada continues to beat all rational expectations. Even though he has shown his ineptitude and complete lack of dignity on several occasions, Justin Trudeau's administration continues to exceed all expectations of bad governance. The Prime Minister easily proves wrong the saying that a bad clock is right twice a day. Hopefully, Canadians will soon get a chance to make things right and choose a Prime Minister that actually has something to offer and cares for all Canadians regardless of their religious, political, cultural, and sexual beliefs and orientation. While speaking at a town hall meeting in Winnipeg recently, Pierre Poilievre, Ev, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, discussed his thoughts on the Justin Trudeau administration, especially how the Prime Minister's clueless policies have driven millions of Canadians to object poverty. The official opposition leader told the attentive audience of the horrors of the Trudeau administration. Young mothers have nothing to feed their children, millions of Canadians are trooping to the food banks, and veterans are being advised to use the medical assistance in dying program rather than expect the country they serve loyally to protect them. Then there is the Liberal government's unbearable fixation on climate change affecting us all and deliberately ruining millions of businesses or driving them out of Canada. Yet, the Trudeau administration continues to spend billions of taxpayers' dollars on companies that don't exist and large firms with highly questionable business practices. Before we listen to the leader of the CPC, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss our videos. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. My folks, when they, they adopted me, raised me just like everyone else, they always taught me though, that it didn't matter where I came from, it mattered where I was going, it didn't matter who I knew, but what I could do. And that is the country I want my children to inherit. That's the country that attracted my wife to Canada. She was born in Venezuela, and they fled as refugees. Her father worked in a bank there when he got to Montreal in a working class, tough neighborhood. He had to start all over. Hopped on the back of a pickup truck every morning, drive out to a farm field and pick fruit. He knew that was tough work, but for him, there was no greater dignity than to provide for one's family. And now, he's a part owner in a pharmacy. He's got rental properties. He's very successful. And that's the Canadian dream, the belief that if you work hard, it doesn't matter where you started off, you can climb as high as the dream can imagine it taking you. That's the wonder of what Canada, but lately, people feel like that dream has melted away into despair. Increasingly, people feel trapped. I meet young people all the time who have no idea how they're gonna move forward. They live in tiny 400 square foot apartments because they can't afford anything better. Worse, they often live in their parents' basements, now well into their 30s. Our young people feel like they can't move ahead no matter how hard they work. Single moms put water in their kids' mouth because food prices are up 11% year over year here in Canada. Meanwhile, our veterans who are denied the basic treatment to which they are entitled are advised by government bureaucrats that maybe they should just consider ending their lives as well. And why wouldn't the bureaucrats think that was okay when now their prime minister is putting forward a bill that would propose medical assistance in dying as a solution to mental illness. Shame on him is right. Here in Canada, in a country where 30,000 people have died of drug overdoses in the last seven years alone. And the same sleazy companies that brought those opioids into Canada by lying about their addictiveness and lethality are not only getting off scot-free, are now landing Juicy federal government contracts, companies like McKinsey, which advise on how to lie to the medical system and get people hooked on these drugs, while our people lie face first 
overdosing on the streets of our country. These companies make off like bandits, profiting off of the generosity of the liberal government. You see, not everybody is doing badly in Canada today. There is a privileged few that profit off the powerful and their profit off the influence and the connections they have to an increasingly powerful and concentrated government. You know that the amount of money spent on contracting for high paid consultants has gone up from $10 billion to $17 billion, a 70% increase in the amount of money paid out to those consultants. We spend $17 billion on that. There are 15 million households in Canada. That means the average household is spending $1,000 in federal taxes just to pay for consultants now in Justin Trudeau's Canada. So not everybody's doing badly. There is a small elite, a little aristocracy that is doing better and better as the wealth is concentrated in the hands of fewer and fewer people. That is Justin Trudeau's Canada. Meanwhile, he stands aside as though he's just an observer to all the men's misery that is unfolding in the country that he has now led for seven years. He says he's not responsible for any of it. He has no control over these failures. Well, if he has no control over it, why is he in the job? Why doesn't he go do something else? Why don't we put him on a one-way ticket to Hollywood so he can go be a Hollywood actor? The Trudeau administration has yet to respond to queries about their connections with McKinsey and why they're spending so much on consultancy firms. Canadians also deserve to know why Christopher Freeland, Trudeau's deputy and finance minister, is in such a hurry to invest $2 billion in a company that does not exist. In a clip from a Senate Finance Committee hearing last December, Senator Elizabeth Marshall, former top finance personnel in the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, questioned Freeland about a stipulation of Bill C-32 call-in for the establishment of the Canada Growth Fund. Marshall told Freeland, it's going to provide $2 billion to you as minister to buy shares in a corporation which does not exist. There is no legislation which tells us anything about this yet to be created corporation. We don't know anything about the composition of the board or even whether there will be a board. Rather than address these important concerns, the finance minister said, I would say to you two things. One, the green transition, we have to act quickly. But from my perspective, the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act added to the urgency with which Canada needs to act. They are deploying hundreds of billions of dollars to invest in the green transition. We need to move really, really fast and so getting this fund in place quickly is more important than ever. So like the Trudeau administration to fixate on other governments, climate change and everything but what they are getting paid to do. Let's get back to Pauli Ev's speech as he discusses how government can be in much needed breath of fresh air for Canadians. There's a lot of hurt in this country but there is good news. We are going to transform that hurt into hope. We're going to put people back in charge of their lives and restore Canada as the freest nation anywhere on earth. That is our purpose. We're going to tackle Trudeau's inflation. Here's how. We know why we have the inflation. The cost of government is driving up the cost of living. Half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits, a bit of the goods that we buy and the interest that we pay. More and more taxes like the carbon tax. You know, it's pretty uh, pretty basic stuff. When you have a half trillion more dollars bidding up goods, you're going to have higher prices, right? And, and that's what we have right now in Canada. So we're going we're gonna to rein in government spending, bring in a dollar-for-dollar dollar law that requires the government find equal savings for any new spending. They brought this in in the United States back in the 1990s. Cap government spending. Forced politicians to live by the same laws of scarcity as everyone else. The result was they balanced the budget, paid off $400 billion of debt. But as soon as that law lapsed, America went right back into deficit where it's remained for the two decades that have, have followed since, proving again that politicians need legal restraints on their spending or they will spend more and more and more. Why? Because they don't have to live by the same laws of scarcity of every other creature in the universe. And the birds and the trees, the fish and the seas, they have to maximize the use of limited resources, but not politicians. They just pass it on in more debt, more taxes, and more inflation. Well, this law will cap that spending. We will cut the waste in the government. We'll cut back the high-priced consultants, we'll cap the size of the bureaucracy, and we'll be very targeted in finding savings. Like, for example, how about we defund the CBC? Yeah. They always love to criticize everyone else. They love to divide people along race. 500, 500 employees at the CBC wrote a letter saying that the CBC is systematically racist in how it covers the news media. So why are we giving a billion four to a racist organization? Right? I'll tell you something, when I'm, when I'm Prime Minister, we're going to do a full investigation 
not only into the waste and mismanagement, but also into the racism of the CBC executives and why they've been able to get away with it. Cut back on the corporate welfare and the powerful insiders that continually get the contracts will ensure that dollars reach directly to the people on the ground, the hardworking people who pay the taxes instead of just going to the upper crust and the elite and the, and the, and the high level executive bureaucracy. We're going to transform government so that it actually delivers results for the money it spends rather than just being gobbled up by the interest groups and the insiders on Parliament Hill. More and more taxes have failed to deliver you better services. Look, they've increased the size of the public service by 30,000. Can you get a passport? Do our airports and our airlines function properly? We've got 1.1 million people waiting in a queue to immigrate here to Canada. See, the money goes to Ottawa, but just because you spend more doesn't mean you get more. I will be transforming our programs so that they pay for real results rather than just being consumed by bureaucracy and interest groups. We're going to put the dollars where they get outcomes because you, the people, are paying the bills and you are the ones that should benefit from the outcome of those spend that, that expenditure. And by the way, speaking of standing up for the people in this country, uh, next week I gather there's a bunch of hoity-toities that are going to a place called Davos. I want to tell you, there will not be a single solitary conservative member of Parliament. They'll be in their writings working with their people in this country. What are your thoughts on the town hall speech? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. You can also join the conversation on our Telegram channel, link below, without fear of undue and repressive censorship. See you there, and thanks for watching.